This is part one in a series of videos on section 1.1 of your text. In this one we look at the meaning of the term proposition. So here's the definition of the term. A proposition is a statement that is either true or false. In our course we're primarily interested in mathematical propositions. So let's look at several examples. For each of sentences A through I, decide if it's a proposition, and if so, decide if it's true or false. So why don't you put the video on pause and work through each of A through I, and we'll discuss each one when you come back. Okay, which ones of A through I are propositions? Well, all of them are propositions except for A and E. A is not a proposition because we don't have enough information about X. If we replaced A by X equals 0 and 2X plus 7 equals 10, then it would become a proposition. In fact, a false proposition. And if we instead replaced A by X equals 3 halves and 2x plus 7 equals 10, it would also become a proposition, and it would be a, a true proposition. E is not a statement, since it is a directive. It does not assert that something is true at all. Okay, let's look now at B. B is a proposition. In fact, it's a true proposition because there does exist a real number x, such that 2x plus 7 is 10, namely, x equals 3 halves. C is a proposition, but it's a false proposition, because there doesn't exist an integer x um, with 2x plus 7 equals 10, since 3 halves isn't an integer. D is a proposition, but it's a false proposition, because it's not the case that every real number x satisfies 2x plus 7 is 10. In order to prove this, we would need to produce what's known as a counterexample, in other words, a specific x for which 2x plus 7 is not equal to 10. For example, x equal to 0 is a counterexample to this sentence here. For a similar reason, f is a proposition which is false, and a counterexample might be um, a equals 1 and b equals 1. The left side would be 4, and the right side would be 2. Look now at g. g is a true proposition because there do exist uh, real numbers a and b with that property. For example, um, a equal to 0 and b equal to 0 would be an example. Now look at h. h is a proposition because either the given equation has a solution in integers x, y, and z, or it doesn't. But this time it's a hard question to decide whether or not it is true or false. So we'll just have to leave it at that. I is a true proposition because uh, this equation is actually an identity. It's obtained by just factoring 2 out of the left-hand side. So now note the use of the terms there exists in s several of these statements, and for all, for all, here, for all, for all. These terms are referred to as quantifiers. The quantifiers turn a sentence which is not a proposition, as for example in A, into one that is a proposition, See, we, the only difference between A and B was the introduction of the quantifier. And similarly, 
in D, the introduction of the quantifier, turned A into a proposition. So these quantifiers are extremely important in expressing any mathematical statement that involves symbols.